Ohio State has been insane when it comes to wide receivers. In the last few years, they've recruited blue chip prospect after blue chip prospect. It always seems they sign the top receiver in each high school class, and that is not going to change as they look ahead to the 2023 class. In the last few weeks, Ohio State has grabbed a ton of talented players, and in today's video, I want to talk about how the Buckeyes have built such a pipeline, the head coach behind all of this, and we're also going to take a look at the backstories and future of the Ohio State wide receiver room and the commits they have recently gotten. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and talk about Ohio State wide receivers. In order to understand how all this has happened, we need to meet the man who's recruited all these kids. That is Brian Hartline. Most Ohio State fans are more than familiar with him as he was once catching passes for the Buckeyes. He grew up in the state of Ohio and stayed home to play for Jim Trestle and was a big part of the Buckeyes program. He had a very productive career as he was drafted in the fourth round and most notably spent time with the Miami Dolphins. After a seven year professional career, he totaled 344 catches for 4,766 yards and 14 touchdowns before he decided to hang up the cleats. In 2017, he went back to Columbus and got a job as a quality control assistant. Call it skill or just plain luck, he catch a major break in 2018 as their wide receivers coach Zach Smith would get fired. He was fired for his controversy and Hartline was named the interim dude and he excelled and immediately connected with the players. He started to draw in big time names and was named 24-7 Sports New Recruiter of the Year in 2020. He definitely earned that name as during his time in Columbus, he has developed a reputation as one of the country's best recruiters. He signed 12 total top 100 receivers in his time there and that just is insane. He's also been seen as someone who could climb the college football coaching ranks, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. In multiple interviews, he already says that he cannot believe he's even the receivers coach at Ohio State, and that he feels like he's already at the top of the ladder. I know a lot of coaches say that, and Hartline definitely could be genuine, but if he was offered the job at Alabama, or was offered an offensive coordinator position at a bigger school, I don't know if he would decline it. That's just my opinion though, and we'll have to wait and see. Either way, Hartline loves his job, and he's really dang good at it, so who are some of the players he has recruited so far? Well, it started with the three-headed monster of Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's also recruited guys such as Jamison Williams, Mookie Cooper, and Julian Fleming, but as we know, Williams spent two years on the team before he transferred to Bama, Cooper ended up transferring to Mizzou, and Fleming has been pretty disappointing in his career so far. Don't worry though, he has plenty of stars in the waiting. After Olave and Wilson became first round picks, Jackson Smith and Jigbo will be back, and right now he's considered the number one wide receiver prospect in the country, alongside LSU's Kayshawn Boutte, USC's Jordan Addison, and North Carolina's Josh Downs. Personally, I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is the best receiver in the country, and is the best one that Hartline has coached so far. Outside of him though, you have two guys who everyone is raving about. Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Ibuka. The first one is Marvin Harrison, who was obviously the son of the former Colts Hall of Famer, and he was also highly recruited and chose the Buckeyes. There was a lot of hype for him after the spring last year, and he didn't play a whole lot until the end of the year, but when he did, he showed how good he was going to be. In the Rose Bowl, he caught three touchdown passes and showed incredible athleticism and hands. I'm definitely super pumped to watch MH3 this year, but the number three option is just as good, and his name is Igmeka Ibuka. Coming out of the state of Washington, Ibuka was a five-star recruit and the number one receiver in the class of 2021. He had incredible stats in production and also had the physical tools to translate to become a star at the collegiate level. He ended up choosing to go across the country to Ohio State, where he showed major flash as a freshman, but didn't get much of a shot. Now, he'll be the starter in 2022, and has all the tools to be a superstar and carry on the tradition and torch that the guys ahead of him carried. While both Jackson Smith and Jigba and Marvin Harrison should be a thousand yard receivers, most agree that Igbuka will also shine in special teams and put up big numbers. I can see him getting probably 50 catches and 600 yards worth of receiving with probably six to eight touchdowns. He has extremely great hands and can make great catches, and I also think he'll return a punt or a kickoff to the house as well. We now know of the returning guys, but who are the newcomers? Well, Kion Graves was a highly touted receiver in the 22 class, and he's from the Arizona Powerhouse High School of Chandler. He was overall the number 14 player at his position and the 88th best player in the nation. He will have a ton of hype, but I'm not sure he'll play much right away. The guy after that is Caleb Burton. At one time, this dude was a five-star recruit, but his stock dipped due to an injury, but that does not mean he doesn't have incredible potential. Coming out of a famous Texas high school in Lake Travis, Burton was a star at a big-time program, 
and was ranked as the number 21 receiver in the nation and the 132nd best recruit in the country. It doesn't stop there though, as they still had two more guys. One of them was Caleb Brown. I feel like he's the least talked about of the four, but coming out of St. Rita High School in Chicago, he was the number 13 receiver and the 79th best player in the nation and could have an opportunity to play right away. Finally, you have the last dude in the 22 class, which is Kojo Antwi. I hope I said his name right, but I love this dude's game, and coming out of Lambert High School in Georgia, he was electric, had offers from everywhere in the country, and eventually chose the Buckeyes. According to 24-7 Sports, he was the number 26 receiver and the 151st best player in the nation. So yeah, Ohio State signed four true receivers in the class of 22, and all were top 200 and top 30 at their position. It's going to be a very crowded wide receiver room, and I think definitely one or two of them will inevitably transfer, as there's just not going to be enough catches and passes to go around, especially considering the guys they've added to the 23 class. Now, let's meet those guys. So as of late, Hartline has been on fire, as he's landed three dynamite commits in the last two weeks. We're going to talk about those three guys and the dude who committed a few weeks ago, and his name is Bryson Rogers. He grew up in the state of Ohio and dreamed about becoming a Buckeye one day, and that would end up happening. He's blown up in the last few years and committed to the Buckeyes the day after this year's spring game, and he's a little bit less touted than the other three, but there was some interesting news that happened to him last week. When the other three guys ended up committing, a Michigan coach actually reached out to him, hoping he could flip Rodgers from Ohio State to Michigan. Rodgers would shut it down though. He said, quote, the team up north and their staff must not get the memo that I'm committed to the Ohio State University. He said that in a now deleted tweet. According to 24-7 Sports, Rodgers is a four-star recruit, the number 32 receiver, and the 270th best player nationally, but I'm sure that will change. As someone told me, he could be the best of the four. They could be crazy or they could be right. I'm not sure. So who are the big three? Let's start with the first one in Carnell Tate. Tate is from IMG Academy, which many of you guys know as the powerhouse school down in Florida. If you shine there, then you're probably going to be a big time recruit, and that is what happened to Tate. He's ranked as a five-star player, but he ended up pushing his commitment from the fall, and many thought he was going to commit to Tennessee. Eventually, Ohio State would win out, though, and he said, quote, Ohio State has always had a special place in my heart since I was a kid. But going through this process, I didn't know if they were the best fit for me. As I went to each and every visit and talked to more coaches and went over the ball, I slowly realized that they were the spot for me. As a kid, Ohio State was my dream school, and it means a lot to go there and accomplish great things. As I said, he ended up choosing the Buckeyes over Tennessee and Notre Dame, and he credited his relationship with Brian Hartline. He said, quote, Coach Hartline is what made Ohio State right for me. His development is very important to me. I know he will develop me into a first round pick and a great receiver. So how will Tate end up fitting in college? Well, he'll be a matchup nightmare because he's six foot two, and he has great agility and awareness to line up in the slot. So he is seen as both an outside and inside wide receiver. Considering his size and ability, he'll likely line up as an outside receiver in college though. Tate is an absolute beast and he is ranked accordingly. 24-7 Sports lists him as a five-star recruit, the number three receiver, and the 28th best player in the class of 23. That alone would be incredible, but two other big time players joined him. The next one is Brandon Innes. He's from another big time Florida high school as he played at American Heritage High School, which is located in Plantation, Florida. He's been seen as a big time player since eighth grade as he has moved schools a few times, but is still produced at a high level. As a junior in 2021, he only finished with 340 receiving yards and 308 rushing yards, but he also was a quarterback. He was one of those athletes that did a little bit of everything. And after he blew up, he decided he was going to commit to Oklahoma. Things would change though, as after the Lincoln Riley situation, he would back out and once again open up his option. USC, Miami, and Ohio State all began to pursue him, but it really came down to the Buckeyes and the Trojans. After his own interest and the Tate commitment, Ennis pulled the trigger and became a Buckeye. So why did he choose Ohio State? He said, quote, the coach is there. I built a great relationship with him over time, and I know Coach Hartline will develop me to the best version of myself on and off the field. Also, the competition in the wide receiver room is going to be great. I will have other top guys pushing me every day, and that is what I need. Ennis has been hyped up for a long time, and I honestly thought he was going to go to USC, but no, he's going to Ohio State, and this is going to be very interesting to watch. According to 24-7 Sports, Ennis is a five-star recruit, the number two receiver, and the 18th best player in the nation. There is still one more guy to talk about though, and his name is Noah Rogers. That'll be two Rogers in the 23 class, which is kind of interesting, but he was the latest guy to commit to them. 
He's another big time name after he caught 70 catches for 1,432 yards and 22 touchdowns as a junior. He goes to Rollsville High School in North Carolina, and alongside Ohio State, he considered Clemson and UNC. He took visits to those three schools, but he eventually chose the Buckeyes over 24 other offers. So why did he go there? He said it was because of Coach Hartline, the Ohio State atmosphere, and the opportunity to play at a high level. That is what is ultimately drawing him to Columbus, and while he is not a five-star, he's still a huge deal. According to 24-7 Sports, Rodgers is a four-star recruit, a number nine receiver, and the 50th best player in the class of 2023. To 99% of college football programs, that guy would be a potential program-changing player. But right now, he's seen as the third or fourth best option in this recruiting class, which just goes to show you how crazy Brian Hartline has been going on the recruiting trail. The one downside to grabbing all these players, though, is there's more of a potential for them to transfer. This room is going to be so unbelievably competitive and loaded that it's going to be really hard to see the field. And if a player is not getting time, then he will likely transfer and go grab some NIL money from another big time school. We will have to wait and see though, but right now, Heartline is on fire. He is a maniac when it comes to recruiting and developing receivers, and Ohio State has an extremely fun 23 class. I'm definitely curious to watch how it all plays out, but now let me know your thoughts. Who is your favorite receiver in the 23 class? What current freshman could have the biggest impact down the road? And who is the best receiver under Coach Heartline so far? Be sure to let me know down below, let me know how you think Ohio State will do in 2023, and give me another topic, player, or recruit I could take a look at in my next video. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button for the algorithm, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.